Welcome to the lecture on paired samples hypothesis testing. In this lecture, we're going to be going over uh, paired samples. Um, it is a uh, hypothesis testing where we're comparing uh, means again. And uh, in this particular situation, we've got uh, two different groups that we are comparing, but we're looking at the difference scores. Um, of those groups instead of the actual means of each one of those groups. So we're going to take a look at that. Uh, so in order to uh, go through this, make sure that you uh, read through the section in the book on um, matched pairs or samples. And if you click on that, uh, it'll bring you to the section in the book. It's in chapter 10. Uh, so chapter 10, uh, specifically 10.6, matched pairs. Uh, matched or paired samples and it'll bring you through uh, some examples um, and just give you a little bit more information about that. Um, so uh, next read through this overview sheet, um, watch through uh, watch the YouTube videos. Um, we're going through the paired samples hypothesis testing right now. Um, and then the paired samples final project uh, file, there's, um, it'll bring you through how to do the final project portion of, for paired samples, and then complete the homework uh, problems on this sheet. Um, and then uh, complete the paired samples hypothesis testing portion of the final project, and then submit a picture or file of the completed homework from this worksheet, um, and then complete the paired samples hypothesis testing quiz. Okay, so uh, let's go through some vocabulary really quick. Uh, the only vocab really is uh, matched pairs. Um, matched pairs, when you are dealing with uh, two, in, uh, two groups or two sets of data, two groups of data, um, if there's a way to match each individual observation in one group with a separate observation in a different group, those are referred to as matched pairs. And the two samples, they are dependent on each other. Um, you might have uh, like differences like a before and after scenario where you have like a matched pair where you take a test at the beginning of the semester and then you take another test at the end of the semester. You have two different scores, um, uh, but they're matched. They're matched on the student. Um, and so by doing that, we can actually calculate a different score um, for those matched pairs. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, so next, Cohen's D. Um, we're still using effect sizes. This is Cohen's D effect size, so just be aware of that. Okay, so what is the purpose of this particular uh, hypothesis test? Why would I run this hypothesis test? The main purpose of this test is to uh, examine uh, the mean of the difference Examine the mean of the differences between two dependent or paired samples. Uh, more specifically, um, you might have a sample um, where you have two different uh, scores for the exact same sample. Like, for instance, I give you a, a, an assessment at the beginning of the semester, then I give you another assessment at the end of the semester, and I compare the scores for each individual at the beginning of the semester compared to the end of the semester. Um, determine if there's differences between conditions. Um, so I'll, uh, I put uh, one, uh, I give you one uh, situation where um, I see how well you do um, in performing a task when it's really cold outside, and then I give you the same task when it's really hot outside, and I want to see if there's a difference. Uh, that's a, probably a really bad example, but, you know, you get the point. There's uh, the difference between conditions, uh, the difference between, um, you know, performance um, in two different conditions. Um, determine if there's differences between measurements, uh, differences between matched pairs, uh, so, like, if you use um, uh, the, like, credit scores, um, you have different credit score companies. One score, uh, one credit score company will rate you this way. Another credit score company will rate you that way. Uh, you know, are there differences between the two, and are those differences consistent? Um, and then matched pairs, there's lots of different matched pairs, and we'll go through some more examples about that. Assumptions to be able to appropriately and accurately use the hypothesis test, what must be true about the data being tested? Uh, we've got to have one dependent variable that's measured at a continuous level. Once again, we're dealing with continuous level data. And then one independent variable 
that consists of two categorical um, two categories that are dependent on each other uh, that are dichotomous. Um, there should be no significant outliers in the difference between the two related groups. There can be outliers in the actual individual groups, but when you look at the difference scores, which we'll get into that in a little bit, the first thing that you've got to do is calculate the difference scores. Um, when you've got the difference scores, there can't be outliers in the difference scores. Um, and then uh, the, distri uh, the distribution of the difference the differences or the difference scores of the dependent variable between the two related groups should be approximately normally distributed. So uh, we're not actually examining the two individual groups. What we're doing is we are examining the difference scores between those two groups. Okay, and then we've got the hypothesis examples, which are right here. Um, which won't make too much sense until we actually get into it, but they are written very differently. Um, once again, like I said, we are comparing the difference scores, and so you'll notice that it says the mean of the differences between the paired samples. So in other words, the average difference between or the average difference between the paired samples equals zero as compared to does not equal zero. The average mean of the differences between the paired samples is uh, less than or equal to zero. The average uh, mean of the differences between the paired samples is greater than zero. And so right now, all that we're doing is we're comparing the mean difference. The effect size, this has got to be the easiest effect size to calculate. You literally take the absolute value of the mean difference and you divide it by the standard deviation of the mean difference.